It's expensive to build SaaS apps. You need authentication, integrations with payments and email, UI dashboards and scaffolding, and testing and development infrastructure. All of this scaffolding takes time and effort to build. That's time spent on infrastructure, not on your actual business. CloudSeed is a SaaS project template for .NET that comes with all of this scaffolding included. So you can skip the scaffolding and start building your business right away. I built CloudSeed because I was frustrated with the amount of duplicated work I had to do every time I wanted to start a new business. So I built it to include everything you need to get started. Users and authentication, payments, subscriptions, email, basic SaaS UI components, and development and testing infrastructure so you can build anywhere. The goal was to give you a solid foundation that you could build your own business on and to make it easy enough that you could get started in minutes. Let's start building with CloudSeed. The first thing we need to do is grab the code, which you can do from the CloudSeed account page. The code is split into three major sections, which we'll call services. The first service is app. This is where the core application logic lives, exposed externally to the other services via API. The next is web, a thin UI layer that interacts with apps APIs and making it available to end users. Finally, we have DB, which is a container used to spin up a live local DB for testing and development. Each of these services is containerized via Docker so you can build and run anywhere. This gives you a simple and scalable architecture ready to grow with your product and system needs. We'll run CloudSeed via Docker containers, so if you don't already have Docker installed on your machine, head over to the Docker website to get it installed. Now let's open up our code in an editor and note that we have folders for each service, app, web, and DB. We can build and run CloudSeed by copying and pasting this command and running it in our terminal. This is gonna do a few things. Look for and clean up any running containers. Build new containers from the code found in your directory. And finally, run those containers and make them accessible from your computer by binding to open ports. The initial build may take some time as it needs to find and download all required assets. Subsequent builds will generally be faster as your machine starts to cache these assets. For brevity, we'll skip ahead to the end of the build. If the build and deploy is successful, we'll start to see each service container output its logs to our terminal. This is a great place to monitor activity and debug errors while developing locally. By default, each service container will be bound to a specific port on your machine for easy access. Let's see what web looks like by navigating to its default port. Here, we can see CloudSeed's default UI, complete with landing page, pricing page, and authentication flows. We can also see our services logging to the terminal to notify us that an action has occurred. We can try out the authentication flow by registering and logging in. Note that doing so will throw an error until you've configured your API keys. We make errors visible so you always know if something's going wrong. When in development, we print out the login code so that this missing configuration doesn't get in the way. You can verify that authentication was successful by navigating to the account page, which requires authentication. We can test our code in much the same way. First, we'll close down any running CloudSeed containers by killing the process. Next, we'll create an instance of DB that we'll read and write from. And finally, we'll spin up a container that will run tests against our live DB. With that introduction, you have everything you need to get your next SaaS application up and running in minutes. All the code, documentation, and commands I used here today are available on CloudSeed's website in the documentation section. If you have any questions about CloudSeed or building SaaS applications with .NET, let me know in the comments and I'll cover them on my next videos.